Hey, it's Stephen Hack from Career Watch. In this video, we're gonna help you figure out whether aerospace engineering is the right career for you. We have a lot of facts and figures for you to review. We're gonna go over salaries, demand, educational requirements. We're also gonna go over one X factor that a lot of people should consider before going into aerospace engineering. Aerospace engineers design, construct, and test aircraft, missiles, and spacecraft. Often they're involved in basic and applied research in a lot of different types of organizations, including government, military, contracting, and more. Aerospace engineers create mathematical models. Often they're testing these models or prototypes with environmental, operational, or even stress tests. They can also be involved in writing technical reports or other documentation. Often aerospace engineers specialize in one of two different types of engineering, aeronautical engineering or astronautical engineering. Aeronautical engineers work with aircraft. This could be for a company such as Boeing or Airbus, pretty much the only two big companies that create commercial planes. Aeronautical engineers are involved primarily in designing aircraft, and they have to be experts in propulsion systems. Meanwhile, astronautical engineers work with the science and technology of spacecraft. They can also work for Boeing. Boeing actually has a lot of defense contracts and contracts with NASA, and they could also work for companies such as SpaceX. There's definitely a lot of overlap between aeronautical and astronautical engineers. One advantage to becoming an aerospace engineer is a lot of them report high job satisfaction and high meaning. Payscale actually surveyed 500 different occupations, including aerospace engineers. Engineering. They found that 71% of aerospace engineers are extremely satisfied or fairly satisfied with their job. And 64% believe that their work makes the world a better place. Working in an occupation where you have a lot of job satisfaction is important. That's why we created a program called Choose the Right Career. It is a seven-step program to choosing the right occupation for you. We look at how much money you want to make, where in the country you want to live, your interests, your personality, your values and different labor markets. And we use all these different things to help you choose the right career for you. Check out the link below for more details. Like many of the other engineering fields, aerospace engineering is a pretty male-dominated occupation. In fact, 85% of surveyed aerospace engineers describe themselves as male, about 14% Hispanic or Latino, 76% white, 8% black, and about 15% Asian. 85% is pretty high, but there's actually quite a few other engineering fields that are way more male dominated than aerospace engineering. Next, we're gonna talk about educational requirements and barriers to entry to becoming an aerospace engineer. According to the Occupational Information Network, 59% of aerospace engineers that are employed have a bachelor's degree, 33% have a master's degree, and 8% other. So one out of every three aerospace engineers has a master's degree. And you don't see this in chemical, you don't see this in civil, industrial, any of the big three engineering fields. Aerospace engineers tend to have a lot more education than many of the other engineering fields. In fact, one of the big advantages to going into engineering is often you just need to get a bachelor's degree to get most of the job opportunities. So this is kind of a con for becoming an aerospace engineer. Another potential con is the fact that a lot of aerospace engineering job opportunities require US citizenship. And it's not just the US citizenship, it's the fact that a lot of these job, job opportunities require a clearance. And a lot of people actually can't get government clearances. Even US citizens, a lot of US citizens can't get government clearances. So what you see is when you look at a lot of these job postings, I'm using the Google uh, search engine, they have a great job portal. But whenever you see something like active TSSCI clearance required must be able and willing to obtain a CI polygraph, a small part of the population can actually do this. I mean, if you have something like 33% of uh, Americans have some kind of criminal record, whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony, debt, if you have foreign relatives, all this can prevent you from getting a TSSCI clearance. And this is a high level clearance, but even lower level clearances can be challenging to get. And if, if you just look at some of these job postings, Lockheed Martin is a defense contractor. This most likely requires a clearance. Just scrolling through the job postings, you see that many of these job opportunities require a clearance. And this is a huge con for becoming an aerospace engineer. And this is kind of unique among many of the engineering fields. I mean, there are a lot of engineers that do end up getting clearances, but for some reason, a large portion of the jobs for aerospace engineering, at least in the United States, require some kind of clearance, preventing people from entering those occupations. Next up, we're gonna talk about wages, and aerospace engineers actually make a really good wage. In 2021, the average base salary was $122,970 for aerospace engineers. This makes it the third highest paying engineering field, even including software developers. It only falls behind petroleum engineering and computer hardware engineering in terms of base salary. Now, unfortunately for aerospace engineering, 
the wage growth has slowed down a little bit and there's other engineering fields that have greater wage growth. So some of these other engineering fields might catch up to aerospace engineering. In 2016, the average base salary for an aerospace engineer was $112,010. This grew to $122,970 in 2021. This gives us a 2020 to 2021 wage growth of around $1,800 or a 1.5% 1 raise between 2020 and 2021. And just like every other occupation, there's certain hot spots for aerospace engineers where the wages are way higher than the average across the country. The highest paying place in the country for aerospace engineers is no surprise. It's Silicon Valley, San Jose, and San Francisco, California. The average base salary for an aerospace engineer in San Francisco was around $150,000 per year when you factor in benefits. Basically, I usually calculate 30%. That's usually how it works. It brings total compensation to almost $200,000 a year for an aerospace engineer in San Francisco. Another hotspot would be the Washington, D.C. area. The average base salary for an aerospace engineer in D.C. is around $145,000. With benefits, this brings total compensation to around $189,000 per year. Now, one of the issues of working in D.C. is you most likely will have to get some kind of clearance for the local jobs in that metro area. So that covers wages of aerospace engineers. What is demand like? Is there a lot of demand for aerospace engineers? Unfortunately for aerospace engineers, according to the government numbers, the number of employed aerospace engineers has been falling since 2016. In 2016, the government recorded around 69,000 employed aerospace engineers. By 2021, this reached around 57,000. So between 2016 and 2021, there was a loss of around 12,000 aerospace engineers, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So those are the government numbers regarding the employment of aerospace engineers. They don't look that great. It's terrible when an occupation loses people. That means the jobs get more and more competitive. But according to job postings, they're not really showing the same thing. When I searched for aerospace engineer on Glassdoor, I found around 4,000 job postings. On Indeed.com, 8,500 job postings. And on LinkedIn, 36,236 job postings. So based off job postings, it doesn't look that bad. There's plenty of job postings related to aerospace engineers on Glassdoor, LinkedIn, and Indeed. I think the issue here is that a lot of aerospace engineering jobs might be like reclassified as maybe mathematician or software developer. And you can really see this in the job statistics. There's around 57,000 employed aerospace engineers. There's about 1.4 million software developers in the United States. So it's possible that some of those aerospace engineering job opportunities might be kind of reclassified as software developers. But either way, this is kind of the trend. More and more engineers are getting poached by the software industry. Uh, software developers make a great wage and they love to hire people with engineering backgrounds. The software industry is just growing by leaps and bounds and the government doesn't forecast it slowing down at all. In fact, when you look at the outlook of different occupations, the government is expecting a 22% increase in software developers over the next 10 years. And this is greater than any engineering field. So as you can see, there is demand for aerospace engineers. There's just a lot more demand for software developers and the software industry is most likely poaching a lot of aerospace engineers. I've actually personally met people that couldn't make it into the aerospace engineering industry and they end up in software development. Next up, we're gonna talk about the Myers-Briggs personality assessment. A lot of people really like to know the average type in different occupations. I have two different charts for you here. According to the Myers-Briggs company for aerospace engineers, the most commonly found type in this occupation is the ISTJ, also known as the inspector, followed by the ESTJ, the director, and then three is ISTP, the crafter. But the most likely Myers-Briggs types to become an aerospace engineer include the ENTJ, the INTJ, and the INTP. So I hope these facts and figures helped you figure out whether this particular occupation is for you. If you're interested in any of the other engineering fields, I definitely have a video on it so you can kind of compare different engineering fields. And I have a lot of other content on many different occupations. Are you an aerospace engineer? Let us know down in the comments below what you enjoy and what you dislike about this occupation. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.